Congratulations. Oh, yeah, it was a, a great, great win uh, there for our program and our players and, and uh, just all things SFA, SFA football there on, on Saturday. And uh, uh, I think, you know, credit, credit to the players, the players game, and they, they made the plays out there. And it was a back and forth game. And I think uh, – a lot of credit goes to Abilene Christian and Coach Patterson and the job their staff and their their team did this year. They were uh, really, really talented and, and a tough beat. And to beat a team twice is, is really, really tough to do in this game, whether you're playing junior high football or you're playing the National Football League. You know, it's it's tough to do that and to go out there and, and play that, that team, that really talented ACU team on the road, uh, winner take all for the conference championship in Abilene. Uh, and, and having to beat them a second time if, after this one that we played earlier in the year, that that said a lot for our team. And and, uh, and especially coming back, we'd had a, a rough couple last two games that we weren't real proud of, and didn't play our best football. And and uh, the guys, you know, stuck together and and leaned on each other and and gave it all they had for that that last 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 game and 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 got it done. And so uh, there's some spectacular. Performances in that game, uh, some big time plays made at big time moments, and and really take them for those kids and and uh, just our program overall. Appreciate our staff, our our coaches that uh, pour so much into this, their families because uh, it's it's tough. You know, college coaching is very demanding of your time, and, and there's a lot of things we miss as as uh, coaches in terms of family. And, and so I appreciate the wives and the kids and everybody that's behind these coaches, but just the work that they've done. Uh, since they've been here, some of them been with me a long time. Some of them, uh, this is their first fall. But uh, everybody, I thought, put together uh, a lot of great effort and and put a lot into this into this win and into this championship. And and a lot of folks behind the scenes, our boosters, our fans, our students here at SFA, the Lumberjack Marching Band, uh, cheer and dance. I, I hate we didn't get to have this moment at home to celebrate with everybody, but it was still a really special moment. And uh, championships, football games are hard to win. Championships are even even harder, and they're fewer and far between. And it had been a long time coming. It been 12 years since uh, championship been won here in, with SFA football. So uh, tickled to death uh, to, to bring it bring it home to, to NAC and the WAC championship. And, and again, big, big time thanks to our seniors. Uh, several guys played their last game as a lumberjack there Saturday. And what a way to go out on top. And that was a, a lot of emotion. And a lot of love and a lot of celebrating going on on that field after that game, and that's a special moment that I'll I'll cherish forever. So, a um, lot to be thankful for as we head into this week of Thanksgiving. Uh, Drell Woodley named the finalist for the Jerry Rice Award for top freshman at FCS. Just talk about his play this year. Okay, I did not know that. Good for good for him. How many finalists they got? Ten finalists. Well, good. Well, Jarrell's been really special and, uh, you know, got banged up there a little bit there towards the end of the year, but he was still – he came out and battled Saturday and gave us all he had and then some. So, uh, I'm just glad he's on our team. And uh, he's he's earned every recognition that he gets. Uh, fantastic young man, good student. Uh, got a good family behind him down there in Houston and uh, just fired up for him and, and his future because he's, he's going to be – uh, he'll leave here being one of the greatest ever played, in my opinion. I think he's got a, a very, very bright future ahead of him. So uh, kudos to him, and congrats on, on being named a finalist. Nathan? Hey, Coach, specifically about your senior seniors and everything, like how much um, – how glad were you to win it for them, and did it kind of at all in any way make up for the loss on senior night? Yeah, I mean – Senior night could have been any night. You you know you hate losing at home, and we've done a great job here of not losing at home. But that one, that one we didn't 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 show up, and make plays. So uh, it was the last game of the year you, of your career is so special. You know, there's such a finality to it. Uh, you know, I was a senior at one time many years ago, and there was no gray and more hair and grew it out long and everything else. So uh, it's tough, man. They you know at, at some point football football is not a lifetime sport. Uh, yes, I can go out and I can play catch, you know, when I'm 80 years old. But you can't play the game of organized football for life. It's something that, that ends for you. You know, if you play volleyball, you can go play church league volleyball till you're 90 years old. But football ends for you. And, and when that finality happens, man, that's a tough, tough day and a tough moment because it's something you've done your whole life and now it's, it's over. There's no more football, and what do you do now? And so that moment came for a lot of those guys uh, Saturday, 
And so they, it was really cool to send them out a win with a win, but on top of that, to win a winner-take-all championship game their last game. That was part of the message I told them after the game. I mean, they've always been winners in my eyes and, and been champions in my eyes. And, and, you know, this trophy right here and that ring they're going to put on their finger, you know, that's that's – a reminder that they are a champion. They'll be a champion for life, and I think that will help springboard them as they go out into the real world. The things that that's what's great about football is the life lessons it teaches you, and teamwork, and hard work, and perseverance, and you know, going through some tough trials and tribulations like we have this year or over the last four years with this program. It's been a gut punch uh, everywhere you turn, and and they just kept working, kept doing what's right, and and to end as a champion. Uh, was was really special, and so I'm I'm excited for those guys as they head out. But I'm I'm really, you know, some really special seniors in that group, and and you know I'm excited to see Xavier Gibson. When he's a 35 year old husband and father and and businessman, and Miles Reed, and B.J. Thompson, and Juice, and you know Carson Spence. You can just go up and down the line. The things that they've learned uh, through this game and through this program, and and winning that championship there with that last last game, I think is really gonna uh, be special to watch that pay forward, uh, pay it forward in their lives uh, in the future. But was there anything in uh, particular that just stood out to you as far as like what you were proud of on the field wise in uh, Saturday's game? You know, I would I would say that fourth quarter. You know, because you know Abilene's a really good football team, and and uh, and they made it tough on us, and 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 you know credit them, but you know we we sure you know. I had had several plays and several opportunities to seize that game, and we didn't do it. And and those guys, Abilene, made the plays, and we weren't making them. And you know, I'm looking there, going the fourth quarter. We're down, we're down eight points, and they got the ball, and they're driving. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm muddy. And I was so frustrated. And uh, you know, went up and down that sideline and talked to them, and 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 challenged them, and and they responded. And and even. You know, heck, our scout team player of the week guys that, that were there. We had a couple guys that were injured that had played a big role in this game, in this season, this program, and they were there on the sideline. And they, they lifted, I think, the spirits of our sideline and got, got the sideline going, the energy going. And then our, our players that are loving it, loving strong out there at a the time, you know, went out there and just would not be denied. And, and it didn't go perfect in that fourth quarter, but, but they just, they wouldn't be denied. And they made the play. Plays, play after play after play to get us. There's some little plays in there that everybody's going to talk about the big ones, uh, but there's a lot of little plays in there that that really added up and and helped us, you know, win that game. And and again, credit Abilene, they made some plays, but we made more plays and we made the plays that decided that game. And so, just I thought it was almost a mirror image of of a reflection of our our program and, and even this season, you know, just some had some tough times and some tough things go against us, but kept fighting and ended up uh ended up a champion at the end of at the end of everything when the dust settled. Coach, going forward now, what kinds of changes do you expect to be made to your uh, coaching staff here? Well, I don't I don't know, Nathan. Are you gonna fire somebody or is there uh, no I'm not I'm just asking if you, what kind of things you put going forward for I hope, bring it in or anything. I hope I don't have, you know, I, I guess I'm in charge, but I, I'm, I just got out of a staff meeting and told everybody have their resume polished up and ready because it is, you know, job season and, and everything else. And I, I, I'm sure there'll be changes, as we talked about. You know, our staff going into the 23 season will be different than what was just in that, in that staff meeting room. And I hope, hope some guys are able to, uh, you know, if they get some opportunities to – Promoting this business, I hope they I hope they do that. And and I, I've got guys in there that are GAs. I don't want to be GAs the rest of their life. I want them to climb that ladder and right. run their own room and run the offense or defense. Be a head coach if they so desire. Be careful what you wish for. But uh, <laughs> I'll be excited for those guys as, as that as that sure. those opportunities happen. And you know, change you know allows you to to grow. And and again, I. I Personally, from a personal standpoint, I hope we don't have eight coaches turnover. That was a, you know, this bald spot back here got a whole lot bigger over the past 11 months because there was a lot of change uh, within this program. But uh, that that's part of life and, and, and not just this profession. So we'll we'll deal with that as it comes. But unless you know something I don't know, I'm, I think the whole staff is still intact as of 15 minutes ago it was. Gotcha. 
That's all I got for you, Coach. All right, thank you, Nathan. Um, I guess uh, just a, a one question I got for you in regards to what one of your seniors will trade. Um, uh, I know that uh, he was a little hard on himself at the, I mean, the Utah Tech finish, I believe it was, and then, of course, battling illness uh, in the game that we saw uh, before this uh, big win here. Um, I would like to think that you had a conversation with him after the win, and if you could maybe share a little bit about what that conversation was and what, I mean, what his emotions were at the end of winning that. Yeah, my conversation with him, I said, we need to get in and see the compliance officer and see if we can find you one more year. Uh, but, no, I – I was tickled to death for Trey because Trey, he, he, you know, he's a he's a great quarterback, but he's an even better, better person, better kid, and uh, you know, just to watch his growth and development through our program over these four years. But you know, he he jumped out on a leap of faith. He had a lot of offers and a lot of opportunities uh, when we got here. He was at Butler Junior College. He played very well, and and he. He believed in us when no one else did. I mean, we were flat running pathetic then, you know, a new new program and hadn't won and and it was bleak and he jumped on board and bought into what we were doing and and here we went into this thing building this program uh you know headstrong and, and moving forward and it's not been perfect he's not been perfect but he's gotten better uh through the years and and he's hard on himself harder on himself than the people on the message boards are you know and and it's just been very very he's taken us from a bottom dweller one of the worst programs in the country you know to a conference champion and went to playoffs last year and and just where our program was when he got here as a quarterback to where it is now where he's leaving you know he can look back and Look at this, and 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 the state of our program. And know he did his part, and and uh, just really thankful for him because that's a tough position to play, a lot of pressure, a lot of scrutiny, and there's only one of them out there, you know, at a time. So uh, uh, his his impact, you know, ten thousand yard passer. I don't know what he finished with, but it's over ten thousand yards, and just that final play. I mean, my goodness, uh, what a what a script. Well, I guess it wasn't the final play because we. They'd run the clock out there at the end, but just make the game winning play. Fourth down, scramble, broken play. And I mean, you see the video, you see the steel shots, how that guy didn't tackle him, I still don't know. And he found a way to the end zone and, and uh, won that sucker for us. So uh, I'm tickled to him. That's kind of one of the things I did tell him. I said, you know, you, you're going to be a lumberjack legend for a long time based on that last play and, and bringing this championship home to Nack. So, uh, love the kid. And, uh, again, he's another one. I'm I'm fired up to see what Trey Self's all about when he's 35, 40 years old because he's going to be very successful whatever he's doing. What's, what's, oh, what's the next few weeks looking like for you and your guys? You know, we're in the office uh, here this week and, and working. We'll cut out of here, you know, Wednesday uh, for Thanksgiving and spend some much-needed time with, with family and got a lot to, to give thanks for and, and – uh, in terms of this this season, but also just everything about us, you know, and and you know, we live in the greatest country on the planet, and and we're free, and and we got a lot of things to be thankful for that we take advantage of, and and uh, take for granted every day. So we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving. Then the following uh, week is a dead period, and so uh, we'll be in the office there with our players and do some exit meetings, and and obviously we're recruiting. We're recruiting right now. We're going to be recruiting tonight. We've got dinner ordered, and we're going to be. Uh, burning midnight oil next couple of days uh, in that regard, and all next week, and then and then we'll hit the hit the ground running. I believe December second is the dead period lifts, and and so it's time to put together a recruiting class. The next great lumberjack somewhere out there is the next Trey Selves. The next, you know, we got this job December second, two thousand eighteen, and a few weeks later we signed Xavier Gibson, and uh, now he's no longer with us in terms of this program, but he's the greatest receiver ever played this university uh, stat-wise. And so uh, let's go find another one of those guys, and that's what we'll be working, trying to do, uh, replace some of those very valuable, not just Xavier, all those senior seniors that, that did so much for this program. Can you touch on uh, P.J. Thompson a little bit? Um, you know, he had that, he had that de deflection to win it at the end of the game there. Before you all just talk about his play for the past – well, I think B.J. would be the first to tell you that that was not his deflection. That was uh, Miles Hurd uh, that knocked that ball down. And so uh, uh, great play by Miles, and but a great game by B.J. You know, I thought he really uh, had some great pressures. And, uh, you know, he he's one that came here, and that soccer played scout team his whole first year here, and uh, Big 12 transfer and highly recruited guy, and, and uh, put in a year and, and has, has grown so much, you know, from – where he was when we got him to where he is now, and I think he carried a 
five GPA last semester. He's graduating here in a few weeks and, and going to go on and play in the National Football League. He's, he's got the highest draft grade of anybody on our program right now. So uh, he's been phenomenal to coach. He loves football. He loves his teammates. He loves the Lumberjacks. He had he shared some stuff with the team there before the game. And, and uh, you know, he was a special one. He's going to be – He's gonna to be tough to tough to replace as well, but uh, really excited for him and and what what he's gonna be moving forward on and off the football field. When does spring ball start? Spring ball starts. Uh, twenty twenty three season started today, so uh, you know we've we've not you know ironed out all the details on spring game and stuff like that, uh, but we're, we're working on that as part of what we'll be doing this week, just finalizing those dates and and everything. But uh, we're still. They, they tell you it's a 24-hour rule. We're gonna we're gonna celebrate this one a little longer than 24 hours. Uh, it's been been a fun 48 hours, and we're gonna enjoy this one all through Thanksgiving and and through recruiting, and, and uh, then you know get get ready to crush it in the off season and and uh, move forward. But just uh, fired up for these guys, fired up this program. It was a fitting end to, again. Just everything that that these guys, and not just the senior class, but our program has been through, you know, from getting this job and, and knew it would be a tough rebuild. It's been a lot tougher uh, than what I what I even envisioned, to be honest with you. But, you know, having all those suspensions and in uh, 2019, playing 35 freshmen, going out to play Sugar Bowl, uh, I think it's Sugar Bowl Baylor Bears that year, you know, and playing those guys and playing through that year, then scholarship reductions and, and uh, NCAA infractions case and got the death penalty, a postseason ban and nobody left the program everybody stuck with it and you know getting through COVID and you know having to play you know money five money games that year and just to put together a full schedule and I, th- I think we've played uh shoot something like eight FBS games in the last three years and that more than anybody else in the country and that's tough and and just uh everything we've been through and then last year you know I had a great year and then had eight coaches leave and we lost seven FBS NFL level players, you know, off that defense and a complete rebuild going into that. And I know there's a lot of hype with this year and top ten and uh, rankings and everything else. And that that was that wasn't the team that we had. And the team that we had, you know, took this field in August and, and has you know gone through a lot and some tough losses, that gut wrenching loss in NRG Stadium and you know just just right there and, and tough one there at, at home on homecoming. And these guys just kept kept coming back and kept fighting it like they have for four years in this program. And that's why they're winners and they're champions. And, and uh, I love those guys. I love our team. I love our coaches. I love the guys in that locker room. And they're, they're, they're champions for life now. And that was a fitting end for, for this season and, and just, you know, a very satisfying win uh, for them. And, and, again, I'm excited about what it's going to do because those guys, their best days are still ahead of them in life. And I think the best days – for this program are still ahead of us, and this this championship will will do a lot uh, in helping us take that next step. So, uh, been been a fun year, and uh, proud proud to be the head coach of the 2022 WAC champions Lumberjacks. So, uh, pretty pretty special. Thank y'all, Axum. Awesome.